the both of them to be my seniors, although he's younger than me, and he's younger than me. But they're more, both more learning than I am. Maulana, Sheikh Ali Mustafa Sinpal was born in Suriname in South America. <coughs> so he speaks Dutch because it was a Dutch colony. And he speaks Taki Taki? Taki Taki. Salamang. Huh? Salamang. Salamang. The local language in Suriname. He was 17 or 18 years of age and a Christian and was searching and you should ask him to tell you the story of what led him, how he searched and how he came to Islam, but not now. You have him for a whole week. And then Allah brought him to Islam. And then Maulana Fadur Rahman Ansari, Rahimahullah, my teacher, went to Suriname and met him and chose him for studies in Pakistan. And he was a thin, lean little fellow <laughs> when he arrived in 1969. Green, like a green fig. And then he became Hafiz of the Quran and graduated from the Alimah Institute and also did a bachelor's degree at Karachi University and has spent his life since then traveling, serving the mission of Islam in many parts of the world and a very learned scholar. And my brother, Mulana Muhammad Ali Khan, the humblest of all, of all of us. So you'll hardly get him speaking. You have to go after him to get the knowledge which is in him. Otherwise, you're not going to get it. And I was there when he arrived as well in 1965. <coughs> and I saw him. We came from Trinidad. We didn't have Muslim culture there. So we didn't grow up in Muslim culture. But we saw what South Africa produced, the Muslim community. Looking at him, how he lived, how he dressed, how he spoke, how he recited the Quran at the age of what, 17 or 18 or 20? 21. 21. And he studied under Maulana Fadur Rahman Ansari, Rahimahullah. And he graduated, as I also graduated. But I was hot headed and hurried to go back home. So as soon as I graduated my first degree, I packed up and I went back home. But he did not. He stayed on and he did the Kamil degree. He also did the Kamil degree. Okay. He did the Kamil degree on the Mulana Padur Man and Sari. And then came back to South Africa and worked at the University of Durban in South Africa for many years. But low profile, low profile, keeping with his humble status. Yeah. And we are honored to have him with us today. I mean, we had to do a little pushing to get him. We are honored to have him here. And we are honored to have him in the camp for the next one week. So when you have questions, difficult ones, you save them for him. You save them for him. Save the easy ones for me. We will also have other scholars of Islam coming. We have my student Ridwan here. Where is Ridwan? Ridwan Matthews, come Ridwan, stand up. <laughs> Ridwan Matthews in 1986. You came 86. I was the principal of the Alimi Institute by that time. And uh, we, we had a preparatory class before you could start studies at the Institute. So Ridwan joined the preparatory class in 1986 and I was teaching him. And he completed his studies, he graduated, and he came back to South Africa and he's now the director of the Muslim Assembly, which is an important Islamic organization in this country. And while we spend our time 
writing books and writing essays and traveling here and there, they sit, they sit down and do the hard work. We do the easy work. They do the hard work. So they should get more blessings than we get. And so that he has that big responsibility at this Muslim organization called the Muslim Assembly. The others, because they do the easy work, they do the hard work. So they should get more blessings than we get. And so that he has that big responsibility at this Muslim organization called the Muslim Assembly. The others, because they are hard at work, they can't be here. We are the ones like birds, we can fly, but they sit down and they work. There's brother, um, what's his name, Aklika? Oh, Abdul yeah, Alim Aklika, and Lady Smith, right here in South Africa, who dearly love to be here. He studied under Maulana Fadr of Man Sari himself. But Abdul Alim cannot be here because his students are there. The, classes here conducting, the institute that he has is more important than coming here. So he couldn't come. Yeah. The International Islamic Retreat had its origins in a curious thing called the, I don't know whether you've heard of it, the internet. <laughs> I'm not sure whether it was the Jal who created it. <laughs> in order to, you know, spy. Marvelous instrument for spying, eh? But because of the internet, it now became possible for so many more people to get to know me and to also correspond with me. It's no longer a mail that you put in the box and it takes two, three weeks to reach. Something called an email. And you just click and it reaches, you, you know about it, instantaneously. So a number of people started writing to me and said they want to come and study with me. And I constantly said, no, 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 I have no facility, nothing. But a sister from San Francisco, an African-American sister, she didn't ask permission to come. She came. <laughs> Not only did she come, she came with a group of 11 people. <laughs> I spent a week. She spent a week. It was a glorious week. I spent part of the time teaching them and part of the time introducing them to the local Muslim community and so on. And out of that experience of one week with them was born <coughs> a retreat that will last for one week. Then we would, all those who want to come, we say come, <coughs> and we spend one week. <coughs> and so we had the first, we use the word retreat, <coughs> although it has been almost hijacked by the Christians, because of the word in the Quran, وَتَبَتَّ لِلَيْهِ تَبْتِيلًا uh, withdrawal and the philosophy behind it is we want you to put away your cell phones and put away all the baggage of the world and just come and spend a week and get to know each other withdrawing from that dunya and in the process of withdrawing from the dunya we take you back to the Quran so we use the word retreat as the best word we can find in English, but not because we are copying the Christian. And uh, it was held in Trinidad. One of those who worked very hard for that retreat in Trinidad is here with us today. And she's a sister and she's sitting at the back, so you'd want to meet with her. Her name is Sister Salima. In fact, she was Christian. And a couple of years ago, she came with her son and her daughter to a class that I was conducting, at the end of the class, she said, we want to take the shahada. And she took the shahada and never looked back. 